In this video, we're going to cover how to get to the ID Toolkit, as well as what you can do with the ID Toolkit. So ID Toolkit stands for Instructional Designer Toolkit. And this will provide different tools that you can use to you know, modify the way that you present instruction in a course. So let's go to Version Settings while you're in a version of a course. I'm going to go to Manage ID Toolkit. And so you'll see there's a lot of different options which will vary depending on which ones you installed by default. Uh, but this is what the default install routine is. So you have Elm's content, which provides you with the content outline and capabilities, as well as the fact that the whole thing is content-centric anyway in ICMS. You have Elm's ID best practices, which you can watch a video specifically about that by clicking on this little help icon. Um, Elm's objects, which I'll turn on, but just kind of takes a cross uh, approach and shows everything as if it was kind of a learning object, just tagging informally the fact that something's a page or something's a place or location. Uh, Elm's Places uh, gives you Google Maps integration so that you can modify your content and highlight it. So we'll turn that one on. Elm's Polls integrates uh, polls, so you can do inline polling. Uh, reference links allows you to link off to external things. Uh, you could, you know, just link to stuff through your material, um, but hopefully if you watch the tutorial for Elm's reference links, we'll provide enough of a use case as to why you would want to do that individually. Elm Schedule will give you some scheduling and outlining capabilities there uh, that are date-centric. Elm's Terms gives you uh, vocabulary and terminology that can then be dynamically tagged and uh, will find in the content what it is that you said is an important term. And Elm's Timeline integrates a project called uh, Simile Timeline, which is a really nice uh, JavaScript-based timeline tool. So we're going to save all of these, the fact that they'll all be turned on. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is under Course Resources, you now have a lot more links. And so what's provided whenever you turn on any of these is you'll see that there's a, a link that's related to each one of them under your profile at the top. Uh, this way, a student could see all of the things that have been marked as places throughout all of their courses. So you get kind of the big picture of everything you're learning about and where it is. Um, then you get kind of the slightly smaller scope picture, which is the course resources. So this would be, show me all the places that are in this course. And then drilling down even further, when you're on a page, you would be able to associate any of these individually to the page. To see what that looks like, if I go to a page, now that I've turned on some of those, what I want to do is just highlight text. And you'll see enhanced content pops up. Now based on what you've turned on, you can now associate any of these things to the material that you've already created. To see how that works, watch any of the videos about going through and associating things to the content. Objects works a little differently in that it just creates a large list and says everything that's in this course area. This will obviously start to be built out further as you, you, know, you add in places and reference or related links and things like that, then you would start to see those show up in this list as well. Um, it's just kind of a way of treating everything in the course as a learning object uh, that can be gotten to individually. It provides a, a little different way of getting to material. 